Hey, welcome to the Jazz and Champagne channel. What you are looking at at this very moment is my bruised, beat up, and battered patio that has endured the harshness of winter. It is time for an upgrade. It is time for fixing up for the 2022 spring and summer because I'm pretty much not going nowhere. I'm going to be out here chilling most of, most, some, most of the days of the summer and spring. So it's time for a makeover and I'm going to show you how I went from it looking like it is now to looking like this. So stay tuned and stand by on the Jazz and Champagne channel to see how it was done. So as you can see, uh, pretty much everything is pretty much in a disarray. Uh, there's no kind of warmth to this area. There is no kind of cohesiveness to it. Um, and uh, it's just all just jacked up. Let's just call it what it is. Um, there's some things that need to be replaced, repaired. Um, there's some um, things that I want to create to invite me to, to, to come out in, the, in, in that area, in that space more. So I, I gotta get on my game here. And you know, the way this place, the place is looking, the patio that is, speaking of, it's, it's my fault. I've let a lot of things go. I didn't maintain a lot of things like this fireplace, for example. As you can see, it's chipped and bruised and it's old and it's coming apart. Um, so, you know, that's my bad. I didn't cover it for the winter and that's what you get when you don't uh, prepare for winter. So, um, so a lot of this is my uh, just, you know, being lazy over the winter and pretty much staying in the house where the warmth was. So, anyway. Okay, so one of the first projects I decided to take on was the repair of the patio chairs, the patio sectional rather. Um, it, when I looked at it, I, I, I said, you know what, it's still usable, meaning that it's still, the frame was still strong, it was still seatable, and it was just, the problem was is that the, the, the rat tin weaving, the wicker weaving, if you want to call it that, started coming and breaking apart, and that's from frigid frost and cold air. Again, I didn't cover it, so that's what happened there. So anyway, I went on Amazon and bought this Rattan Weaving Synthetic Repair Kit. Uh, there's, there'll be a link at the bottom um, if you are interested in getting that item. Uh, but I get, I get no commission for this, so I'm just, you know, sharing the information. And so I got that kit, and I found a YouTube video uh, of how to repair wicker furniture, and um, I'll show you the process of what, what I went through. Um, and this is actually what I went through in repairing it. It took me about maybe uh, three days. It's tedious, um, but it was a lot better than me spending uh, over $1,200 for a new sectional. Um, and I didn't really want to do that. And like I said, since this one still had uh, a good sturdiness to it and it was seatable, I decided just spin money on repairing it myself which which the kit only costs like about five bucks and uh, i can get some more use out of it some more years out of it besides the kit itself all you need are two items is scissors and a glue gun and you're in business and on your way to repairing your wicker chair and as you can see you don't see any of the, the frays poking out sticking out every which way wicker that it once was, that it was once was. Uh, so it's, it's definitely a nicer, neater look. Um, and um, I'm, I was satisfied with it. And like I said, um, you know, we were considering buying a whole new sectional, which probably would have cost us $1,200. So now we don't have to buy a sectional. So we're done with that part. Woo, look at the top of that of that section though. The tops are as smooth as they want to be, baby. I don't think you can get any better than that for only spending no more than 10 bucks. Woo, I am satisfied with the results. 
things are not sticking all over the place and poking you in the back of the neck even though they weren't poking me in the back of the neck because you know I had the, the pillows blocking it but still it's just uh, it's just nice to see that you can salvage some things and not you know be so quick to throw things away to replace them so I'm really 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 happy with the results moving on to the next project so it's been many many years and my wife has been trying to get me to paint the ceiling above the patio and I've been putting it off putting it off putting it off because I really never really like getting on ladders and painting with my head you know looking up and you know I'm getting older I don't want to take a chance of falling but anyway since I was doing the whole the patio makeover I said you know what I'm just going to get it done this year so I'm not going to show you the process of me painting you know how paint paint is applied and you know I'm not just not going to show you that but what I will show you is the end result we end up going with the blue because she wanted it to be blue uh, she says that it's supposed to keep bugs away but later found out that it does not it's more of a spiritual southern spiritual significance that originated in South Carolina so anyway here's what it looks like BAM and we're gonna move on to the next project I am a lucky homeowner I have the best neighbors in the world to the left of me and to the right of me now what you're looking at is my neighbor who is on the left of me if you're facing my house you're looking into his backyard as you can see he if I can see him he can see me which is fine because my neighbors like I said are great people they're very very respectful of when you are spending time in your backyard and they are very conscientious of not disturbing you if you're in your own backyard trying to enjoy your own you know your own property they have four kids over there and they're they're always asking me are you are you guys okay with the with the noise and and all that and they're great kids they're four kids they're kids kids are supposed to make noise they're supposed to be loud that's why you take them outside so you know they're always conscientious about that which I really appreciate um, but at the same time what I wanted to do was I want to give us some privacy for myself and for them um, mainly because I want one I want to create some kind of a cozy little nook for myself and to give me and to shield me off uh, from them and and also to shield myself from them too so they won't feel conscientious as though that you know they're disturbing me because if I put something there which is going to be a privacy screen that I'm going to build then they won't know that I'm there and they won't know that if they are disturbing me or not so um, the next phase of the project is building a privacy screen slash wall an ideal that I was inspired by various YouTube videos of where people were building their own privacy screen or walls um, for um, in their own um, backyards and patios or decks so on to the next project building the privacy wall building the screen I'm so in beginning the privacy board the first thing that I did was go to my neighborhood Lowe's hardware and I picked up uh, some pressure treated lumber in particular this one here and this one here which are four by four and they're, they're eight feet long and they're pressure treated um, and then I also picked up a two by four that was also eight feet long uh, pressure treated uh, the main thing was that those pieces of lumber was going to act as my vertical post in order for the the horizontal boards to hang from so I want to make sure that my vertical post would endure the weather and be very, very sturdy uh, to be able to brave the elements, which is where the that where behind the section of where it's going to sit. And I know that it gets wet over there. So um, when, as you can see there, there is a, a can of polyurethane stain. I use that to cover all four sides of each board to to give it extra protection, so the the rain can can just uh, bead off of the vertical structure so uh, I started there and um, with the vertical boards first 
So for the horizontal boards, I decided to go with uh, one by six by eight, uh, six of those wider boards that you see there, and uh, also 12 one by two by eight, the smaller boards that you see there for my horizontal boards that's gonna hang off of the vertical post which is gonna be the main boards that's gonna give us privacy. I want it to be a little bit decorative, um, so I kind of um, got this thing of going to the wide and the small. So what I was gonna do is I was gonna, I found this stain just sitting in my garage, this English chestnut stain that I was going to apply to the wider boards, um, and which you will see. So um, I'm, I'm gonna paint the wider boards first, and then, uh, I'm going to show you the stain that I used for, actually that is the stain that I use for the smaller boards. So the red mahogany is what I use for the smaller boards. So looking at the 1x6 boards, as you can see the brown chestnut um, stain has been applied and it came out very nice. Um, I like the color of it, it's very very masculine looking and uh, I'm going to put polyurethane over the stain for extra protection. And as you can see from the, the uh, one by twos, uh, using the red mahogany stain, they came out very, very nice. And those two will be stained with polyurethane. So after I completed painting and staining the various pressure treated pieces of lumber, I decided I wanted to lay it out flat on the ground to, to have a, a preconceived ideal of what this privacy screen would look like while it's upright. I, w I did this because you know the um, the vertical post will be cemented in and once you submit something you cannot undo it. So I wanted to be sure that um, I had the, the, the right width, the space, and, um, and the arrangements of the board. Um, and I just want to be sure that once I do this item, it, it's going to be a permanent item and it's something that I can live with. So originally I was going to go with these five gallon paint buckets that I got from Lowe's that was going to serve as my, um, my anchor for my post for my privacy board. The intentions were that I was going to put the post, the 4x4x8s, uh, inside the bucket and fill it with cement and have them sit out there. But I scratched that ideal because I just wanted a more decorative look and I just didn't want it to look, um, I, just, I didn't want it to look chintzy. So with that being said, I decided to get something more decorative. So I went to the store called At Home and I picked up two of these huge planters that I was going to use as my uh, anchoring point for my post there, my 4x4 post, and fill it with cement. So that was going to be my, um, my anchor and, it's, and it looks so much better than the, um, the 5 gallon paint buckets. So what I had to do was to make sure that I made some drainage holes in it uh, because the, and my intention was is that um, I'm going to fill it halfway cement and then cover the cement with dirt and put some plants. But in order for the plants to survive, I had to make sure that the water, when you water the plants, that the water had to go out. So I had to strategically find out uh, where would the water go um, it, you know, when it's drained. So um, I knew I noticed that the, it does have a drain hole at the bottom, but in order, but the but the inside doesn't really have any holes. So I had to kind of make some additional holes and drain, not drain, but drill from the inside to make sure. As you can see, they were like 40 bucks a piece, um, and so I put a hole there. And when I was pointing inside, and I put a hole there. And inside I put some holes there so that the water can have some place to go. And because the other two pots were 40 bucks a pop, I didn't want to spend another 40 bucks, but I did need a middle pot for the 2x4 for the middle support for the privacy wall that I, that I was building here. Uh, so I went to Home Depot and got this little puppy for like less than under $10. Um, uh, it's better than the five gallon paint bucket, 
um, and it's going to be in the middle between the two brown pots. Uh, so I wasn't really, really uh, concerned about um, having that third um, matching pot for the other two because I, I didn't want to drop another, another 40 bucks for a pot. So anyway, I went with this. So my next step was to get some quick, fast drying cement and I got the, about maybe three bags, I believe. Maybe, yeah, three or four bags of this quick drying cement because the thing of it is, because the posts are going into the pots, um, I needed quick cement to set fast so that I would have a better chance of them being vertically straight. Uh, so quick drying cement, if you're gonna do this, that's the best way to go, quick dry cement. Sets in 20 minutes. So as you can see, the end result, I got my three vertical posts up. They are nicely cemented in the pots. They are nicely vertical and straight and just the way I want it. Came out ideal. Now the question for me was, since I'm doing this project by myself, how I was going to get those horizontal boards to go across those vertical post and to make sure that they were straight so since I didn't have an extra two hands to help hold the boards I mean I could have used my wife but still she would have got tired I was able to find the answer through Amazon and Amazon sell these great little clamps that you can use so if you ever doing a project by yourself and you need to set up extra hands you got to get these clamps Again, I get no commission for this. I'm just passing on information that will may hopefully be helpful for everyone out there who may be doing a DIY project and they're working alone. So if you need an extra pair of hands, you gotta get these clips, they come in handy. See what I mean? No hands, no extra pair of hands needed. The clamps will do the work for you. Thank you, Amazon, but I tell you, without out these clamps, I don't know how this project would have turned out. Those clamps were a big help. So uh, they were definitely worth the investment. But I'll have the link at the bottom for you to check them out if you're ever interested. Again, I get no commission for the, these links. Now it was time to go seat cushion shopping. The old cushions had it had their time, had their day, and it was time to replace them. The back cushions were fine, so we we're just gonna replace the seat, the seat cushions. So we made our trip to at home again. And this time I took the wife because that's what she does best. She does shopping. And uh, she does not dare for me to try to put together color schemes and textures and all that other stuff so I leave that up to her. 
So we had a wonderful day in the store, at least she did anyway, and uh, came back home and this is what it looks like with the new cushions. So you remember early in the video that Brito beat up, battered old fireplace of mines that I had subjected to the harsh weathers of North Carolina and, and just let the weather just beat up on it. Well, I went ahead and replaced it with a new fireplace from Amazon. Again, Amazon. Again, this video is not being sponsored or supported by Amazon, nor do I get any commission. But I want to go with a round fireplace this time to help break the geometric shape of the privacy screen and the geometric shape of the sectional. Um, it uh, uses glass rocks, as you can see. It has a cover, and it comes with a black cover to cover the whole thing when it's not in use. Uh, propane as you can tell and it has the wicker uh, fabric around it to help pick up with and match with the sectional so I was very very happy with this purchase um, got it unassembled and it took me about 30 minutes to assemble it and I did it pretty much in the dark as you can probably see right here because I was so excited when I got off work and got I just got busy and started putting it together so overall, for the most part, the patio is finished, but it's not completely finished because I still have some little details I want to add to it, you know, the, 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 the details, the devils in the details, as they say, or the, the, the details in, is in the devil, whatever. But anyway, it's pretty much um, finished for the most part. I got the major pieces of the puzzle of what I wanted to put together uh, for the patio. As you can see, the privacy screen is there. I have my privacy from my lovely neighbor and he has privacy from me. Um, as you can see, I um, got an outdoor rug as suggested by my wife because she said I needed something to pull it all together and I thought that was a great idea. And uh, that rug, by the way, came from Amazon. Uh, I will have the link for you. Again, I'm not sponsored by Amazon or do I get any kind of commission. Um, that uh, fireplace is covered with a black cover so I'm going to make sure that in the future that I will from now on keep my fireplaces covered. Now that's the dining room table. We kind of dress that up make it look better. So that's the fireplace cover. That's all black so when the fireplace is not in use I cover it up. I make sure I cover it up. I add a little bit of lights there for the ambiance and I brought this outdoor heater or on days when it may be a little bit cool and I want a little bit of warmth but not necessarily want to turn on the fireplace. So I got this outdoor heater to, uh, to give me what I need because I didn't want to get a propane, another propane item out there. So the outdoor, outdoor heater was good enough. So pretty much this is the gist of, of, of our patio makeover for the spring summer 2022. Um, and uh, if you like this video, I hope you like this video because I worked hard to put this together to inspire you guys. Please give it a like. And also, make sure you subscribe. Please subscribe because not only was it hard for me to put together that privacy wall and, and everything that I did for you to inspire you, it was hard to put together and edit this video. So please give me a subscribe. Uh, 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 I'm getting my tongue twisted. Please subscribe to this channel for more inspiration from me. So anyway, that's it. That's our summer 2022 patio makeover. Spring and summer 2022 patio makeover. Um, and uh, stay tuned for subsequent videos made by the Jazz and Champagne channel. Have a great summer. Bye.